Sophie, good to see you. Welcome to Pop Alternative. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You know, I said before we started, you're incredible in this. Congratulations. I mean, I'm just curious because, you know, an important film, a film about strength, a film about courage, reading this script, then going and filming it, what is that like specifically with this project? How did it kind of translate onto the screen for you after reading it specifically? Yeah, it was definitely um, at first very stressful because it was my first time portraying a real life woman yeah. um, and she's led such an incredible life and I felt like I had such big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. um, I felt very, um, I, I felt like I was in great hands because I knew Louise before starting to shoot this movie. We had actually tried to work together on a previous movie years ago. And so I knew that we had the same vision for the character, the same idea what we wanted it to look like. And and I think we both really wanted to, what was important for us was um, when we read the script, it's it's a very dramatic story, yes. um, obviously. But for both of us, what we loved about Irina and what I found when watching all of the archives about her was that she was still so full of light and positive and, and always tried to see the best in people and the best in life. And so I think we really it was important for us to for, for that to translate on screen and to bring a little bit of levity despite all of the dark material that we were playing with. Yes, and you you mentioned kind of the archives and the preparation component of it and from an acting storyteller perspective I always find it interesting because you know before filming and after filming in a lot of ways are like two separate journeys but does it feel like two separate journeys or does it feel like one big kind of journey with multiple steps for you from a storytelling acting perspective um it feels it's so weird because it feels like one long journey but intercut yes. um and it's just all these different it, it just feels like a, a book with different chapters yes um i feel like when when we're, when i'm in pre-production i'm left a little bit more on my own and louise was already in poland and so i was kind of just at home freaking out doing all my research and and trying to um rehearse but not having met the other actors and when everything is is still like being put together and you haven't met the, the crew yet it just it feels like it's not really real and, and concrete yeah and then you get there and everything just happens so quickly and before you know it you're done shooting and then it's like all of and, and then you're kind of you wrap and then you're left with nothing it just suddenly feels like you the project is almost like ripped out of your hands because it's just it's done so quickly yeah. and then I'm the one in charge of of editing the movie um and then yeah. when you and then with, there's this like you you're so excited to see it and then you have like this big break where you kind of forget about the project a little bit and then suddenly you get a call and they're like okay we need you to come like do post-production and to come see the movie and then you're thrown back and in, thrown back into it but it's a mixture <laughs> of like you're proud and it's weird at the same time to see you on screen and to judge your performance and before you know it, it's out in the world and it's a whirlwind of emotions. But it's it's interesting because I feel like those are misconceptions with the life of an actor. One, people like people think that you know a lot of things when it's just kind yeah. of like, you know, you rap and you play the waiting game, but it really is on to the next, right? Like on to the next journey, essentially, until you get that call about ADR or like yeah. press, right? Do you is When did you start kind of realizing that? Was that kind of early on? Because you've been doing this for a good amount of time, but like, have you are you starting to kind of get used to that now that on to the next or is that something that is you kind of you've been used to for a while? I feel like now I'm 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 kind of used to it and and I think that's what I love the most actually about my job is that there's always something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Um obviously some periods are quieter than others, but usually yeah. it's like there's always an event. There's like like I said, it's like yeah. different chapters and whether you're done with one movie but then you start pre-production on another and then you mm -hmm. got onto this one and then you're back brought back into the other there's always something that's keeping you forward and it's never it doesn't feel redundant and it doesn't feel like it's a routine and and that's what i love a hundred percent how separate are projects? Like you look at Arena's Vow, you look at, you know, Yellow Jackets, other things, like obviously different worlds, different characters, but preparation-wise, mindset-wise, it's all storytelling at the end of the day. But do kind of some of those journeys from like preparation or mindsets come with you for other projects or are they all really separate? I'd say they're pretty separate because I've played 
characters that are quite separate. I think the, I mean, I, I do think that every role that you take on um, and every project I've been on have taught me things that I carry along with me as an actor, just in general of like experience um, and just learning from other castmates and other different crews and they all kind of form me into the actor that I am today mm -hmm. um I would say that the book thief is the only one that kind of had has followed me for like Irina's vow because they're similar characters yes. and um similar I mean similar time periods and yep. all the research that I had done for the book thief like watching all the classics of the boy in the striped pajamas and yes uh, and list and the pianist um are all movies that I would that were useful for then Irina's vow. So yeah. those are the only projects that were quite similar. A hundred percent. No, absolutely. I don't mess around with horror movies and disaster movies and all those movies. Is it cool to hear that you're in one of my top three favorite shark movies of all time? Is that cool? <laughs> that is very cool. On Cage is like <laughs> so good. I love that movie. And I've Thank talked you. a lot of your castmates on that before. That movie is so fun. And and I'm just wondering, because you look at that and you look at, you know, Yellow Jackets, which has the horror movie component a lot of in a lot of ways. <laughs> like, it's very yeah. terrifying. And, you know, um, you're continuing to work in the horror movie genre. What's that like being part of that genre at a time where there is a big kind of appetite for it? Like, they've always been around, but they're, like, really popular now. Like, what's that like for you? It's crazy. I don't understand why I kind of, like, started doing horror that much because it's not necessarily a genre that I listen to really or that I love <laughs> doing to me well Yellow Jackets is different because Yellow Jackets like is is more of a psychological horror which that I love yeah rather than like then 47 meters down is like purely like jump scare kind of horror yeah um but yeah I don't know why I've been <laughs> sort of like typecasted to, to do those um but they're really fun I I mean I think it's it's it, yeah they they it's it's crazy because I get scared of watching them afterwards because yes. I'm the prime audience to have like those jump scares oh. um and so doing them don't feel scary because there's not like the component of like music and and thrill and um the the, the cut that makes it scary and then I watch my my things back and I'm like this is this is terrifying and actually speaking of horror I I have another horror movie coming out i know uh, wh whistle yeah so yep. that will also i'm sure will scare me when i watch it i can't wait for that movie i you know like you, you hear about things you wrap up i can't wait for that um at some point though you're gonna read scripts for yellow jacket season one or season two and realize that it is getting more like it's psychological but it's getting it is getting scarier and it's getting more real yeah. is that early on when you're reading scripts like season one or did you really start seeing that in season two for that show it's a scary show. People don't mind say it's like pretty scary. It's one of the scariest TV shows. I think it's because I see it so much more. It's like it's scary, but in my mind, it's like something that could really happen. Like yes. it's so, it's not that far from like reality. Mm -hmm. And I think that I, I, there's a very human component to what they're going through. Yeah. And so I don't think that. When I read it, I knew it was scary, but I didn't see it as like horror so much as just like this is what I would do if if I was stuck there as well. Yeah. Um, but I think when I when I then saw it on screen, watching it with my friends, I was like, I can barely get through it, and I was like, <laughs> I guess that it is it is a little traumatizing now that i watch it back as well 100 i feel like the craziest thing about that show it's not really big spoilers but for people that and there's a good chance that people are watching this interview because i've interviewed a lot of your cast there's a good chance they've watched season one and two but like you know what happens but at the same time you don't know what happens if that makes sense right like we see grown-up versions of your characters right but like so is that kind of interesting from a you like a storytelling perspective where it's like you know what's going on but at the same time you don't know what's going on like do you know what i mean by that a little bit yeah well i think that's what's interesting is to see like the we know and we understand but it's like what pushed him like it, it, that's what i love is to see what are like the we don't have like the events like what led them specifically there like at which point for me it was always like when was the key moment that really like flipped the switch in their brains for them to like start committing these things because it's it's not like one big moment it's just like all of these little moments added together that they're like one step closer to finally committing 
mm-hmm. nothing. hundred um, percent. And, 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 and when you think it can't get any worse, it does. And that's what I love. Well, we know we're getting more yellow jackets. We can't say anything. All we could say is it's going to be crazy. That's all we could say at this point. Yeah. <laughs> wild, wild. No pun intended. It's going to be wild. It's so crazy. Um, And can we give a shout out to the, you know, the yellow jackets fan base? Because it's a global fan base. It's pretty crazy, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. I've never had a show where people are so committed and devoted and i think it's amazing because i don't really read the reviews but um all the girls in our group chat like send them over mm-hmm. and I'm like, these people are so committed they they pick up on things that make me doubt my career and i'm like maybe i should be reading these scripts these scripts better because they pick up on details that i didn't even pick up on and i'm the one doing the show mm-hmm. and i'm like wow they make links and like they create narratives in their minds that i yeah, it's, it's really fun and also kind of stressful because we want to deliver a show that lives up to their expectations and we hope that they're, that they are, that they keep being happy with it. What do you think about the 90s kind of, like specifically, like the music is my favorite, like one of my favorite things about the show. It's what, it's always going to be one of my favorite things. I'm just curious because you like work on things and there's so many elements to a movie right like you're like that's more of the post-production stuff right but even like the score of like Irina's bow like what's that like for you processing everything one once it's out where you kind of see the post-production the music the score of everything like what's that like for me for you from an experience perspective I always find it really hard I'm, I'm very self-critical and I just I, there's so many projects like Yellow Jackets is the best example of show that people love and that I can't really enjoy the way I would enjoy like White Lotus or Succession um, because, because you get scared is that what it is no it's just because I I I have it I I guess because I shot it I just don't see it the same way I, yeah. I can't once it's edited together I had such a different idea in my mind mm-hmm. and because I when I'm looking back at a scene I it, the memories come along with it I remember shooting it there and I remember which angle we did it in. And I, it, 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 it's, yeah, it, it just doesn't feel like I'm watching it for the first time. Like the audience would, I do get it a little bit with the adults because I wasn't there with them when they shot it. Yeah. So that for me is like, I get to watch that part of the show is like part of the audience, but I'm, it's very hard for me to enjoy any project that I've, that I've been in. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. I I see where I see like I got, I'm a creative as well, and I see that like I see this idea of like <laughs> putting something out there, being part of it. But you also know a lot of things too, right? Like you know the scripts, you kind of know what what's gonna happen too in a lot of ways, yeah. unless they don't give you the last like scripts of episodes. But which actually they give us um when we shoot, we get the scripts like maybe four days before we start. And they give you the finale of season two in advance. No, they give they don't even give us the episode. Like we start the we shoot about two weeks per episode. And so we get a, a script every two weeks. We have I have no we're about to shoot in like a month, the third season. We have no scripts and I have no idea what's gonna happen in this entire season. That's why I didn't ask you about it, because you literally like I, I could be like tell me know. something. You know nothing. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I know nothing. It's gonna be crazy though. It's gonna be exciting. People, but they can go see in, in theaters in the states April 15th, 16th. Irina's vow is gonna be available. Yeah. So we can talk, yeah. we can talk about that, which is exciting. Um, so they can check it out. No, you're so great at that. I wanted to know, getting back to that before we wrap up, um, there's always gonna be learning experiences from an actor perspective, right? Whether you've been in a set one time or thousands of times with Irina's vow, what were some kind of learning experiences for you as as like a storyteller actor perspective? I'm just curious about that. I think it was a very, because we had such a small budget and such big scenes to accomplish and in such a short amount of time, it was a very chaotic set, especially also because a lot of the crew didn't speak English um, for production and it was very hectic. And so I think it it was fun, but it, it very, it kept me on my toes a lot and I had to be ready to, like one of the biggest scenes in the movie, um, I was like, it's the most emotional scene in the entire movie. And instead of watching the actual beat, like stunts people getting hung, I was watching like six tennis balls. And like the the um, actor who was doing the big speech wasn't there. So it was the first AD reading me the lines. Yeah. And so it was just like, yeah, to be able to like adapt to any kind of situation and still deliver 
your best performance possible is what I've really had to accomplish this entire movie. And it's a very important movie and everyone's got to go check it out. Uh, that's Irina's value. You're fantastic in it. And, um, you know, when we get more yellow jackets, we get more yellow jackets that we're just going to leave it. Okay, we're going to leave it at that. Sophie, it was really great chatting with you. Thank you so much for coming on Pop Alternative. Thank you so much. Have a good uh, one. You too. Instagram is the best way for people to keep up to date with everything, right? It's just your name. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, this has been Pop Turnative, YouTube.com slash Pop Turnative for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Sophie Nadis and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. This has been an Autograph Communications production.